This is the story of a man who never belonged anywhere, whose backyard is the world. A man whose ways of life are the dreams of escape for those who want action but never find it. The man, John Steele, adventurer. <laughs> Some of my best friends are behind bars. They were born there. Maybe that's why they live such a long time. They're safer where they are. I'm talking about animals, lions in particular. I have one lion story I call Buana Simba. I'd like to tell you about it. Me, I'm John Steele, trademark adventure. <laughs> I call this yarn Buana Simba. It's a title the native boys of Africa give to any white man who shoots a lion fairly and cleanly. It's a gesture of mild respect. Only when they gave Louis Condon the title of Buana Simba, it meant something else. Louis Condon knew his way around New York City. He boasted he could make or break any political running for any office. The only thing certain about him was he'd made a million dollars without breaking his back with hard work. I met him in Africa, in Nairobi, Kenya. Him and his wife. Louis had run true to form. He wanted a beautiful wife, and he looked for her in show business and came up with a real doll named Gwen St. Clair. Gwen was a blonde and gorgeous. The one thing that didn't hit you at first was that she had more depth than any gal with her looks really needed. It was a hot night, just before dinner, when she walked into the cocktail lounge of the Colony Hotel and spoke to me. Mind if I join you? What'll it be? Oh, I don't know. You know your own taste. I sometimes wonder. How about a pink gin? Okay. Johnny. There he is, Mr. Steele. Scotch and soda for me. Yes. Pink gin for the lady. Oh, yes. Sir. You got a match? Sure. Here. Thanks. Where's Louie? Across at the gunsmith. Oh? Buying a couple of rifles. He's going hunting? Yeah. He should have gone with that big safari yesterday. Oh, he says we'll catch up with it. You going along? That's what Louis says. Well, since you're in Africa, you may as well see some of the bush country. I'm scared. You are? Awful scared. Oh, it won't be bad. You'll have some boys with you and a guide. No. No? Some native boys, yeah, but no guide. Well, the boys will know the way to where the safari well, is. Well, I'm scared, just the same. Oh, well, here we are, Mr. Steele. Well, thank you, Johnny. Here, sip this. Thanks. The safari can't be more than 50 miles up country. You'll go by jeep. Why, you'll overtake it in no time at all. Look. <laughs> yeah? You were saying last night you're staying here for another two weeks. Well, I'm trying to finish a book. Would you go with us? Go with you? Yeah. You don't need me, Gwen. You know this sort of country. Louis doesn't. He doesn't know the first thing about it. It'll make a lot of sense now if you hired a professional guide. Oh, he won't. He thinks he's smart. Well, here he is now. Will you go with us? Look, you're on your honeymoon. It's on honeymoon. Easy, easy. It's okay. I turn my back and what happens? <laughs> I find my bride drinking with another guy. <laughs> it's okay, Steve. You're all right. Hey, baby. It's okay. Sure, he's okay, Louis. Yeah, drink up, Steve. I'll buy drinks. We'll have champagne. Celebrating something? Sure, I'm going big game hunting. Me and Gwen here. Louis. Yeah, baby. Uh, Mr. Steele said he'd like to go with us. Yeah? Okay, Louis. Why not, Steele? You want to come along? Okay. Well, are you sure I won't be in the way? Yeah, it'll be okay. More to marry her. Hey, you know all about lions? Nobody knows all about lions. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So we'll go lion hunting and find out about them. What do you say, Steele? You want to go along? Sit down. You and me and Gwen here and a few native boys. When do you want to go? Tomorrow morning. Well, I doubt if you'll get many boys to go at such quick notice. Then we go without them. It has been done, I suppose. This is Roy Condon. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> sure you know, Steele. We get some boys okay. We don't get any, it's still okay. By me, it is. Yeah, I'm glad you're going with us, Mr. Steele. Yeah, got you, baby. Watch it, huh? What's the matter with you? Yeah, just kidding, baby. Just kidding. You know me. Yeah, I'm beginning to. Suddenly, I didn't mind too much that she'd roped me in on this deal. I was curious. Curious about Louis Condon. I got to wondering how a man like that would behave up in the bushlands. 
Louie was accustomed to riding rough shot over people back home, and he was a big shot in every accepted sense of the term. We left for the bush the next morning with one boy, all we could get. We traveled in a jeep type of motor lorry. By midday, we were well out into the plains, and it was hot, about as hot as East Africa can get. Yeah, lousy son. We should have stayed at the hotel. It's okay. Sure, why not? Yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to be like this all the way? No, it'll get worse during the afternoon. Yeah? And you better keep your hat on. Yeah. He yeah. don't make such a fuss, Louie. I got a lot of weight that gets me. Well, maybe you'll lose a few pounds, huh? Don't make jokes with me, baby. Well, you could lose a few pounds. You could use a few. You complaining? Ah, shut up, baby. Hey, look, Mr. Steele, mm -hmm. there's animals over there. Tommy's sort of an antelope. <laughs> they're cute. They're <laughs> kind of crazy mixed up, but they're cute. You'll see a lot of things out here. Just keep your eyes open. Hey, Steele. Yeah? A bush. Let's stop someplace. If you want to. There's some trees up there ahead of us. All right, we'll make camp there. You hear that, George? We'll make camp under those trees. Keep one up. Yeah. Hey, stop this lousy truck for a minute. Keep one up. What's the matter, Louie? Over there. Oh, wait a minute. I saw something move in that grass. What about it? Some animal, maybe. Why not? Put that rifle down, Louie. Put it down, nothing. Look, there's a law against shooting from a truck. If you must shoot at something, get out of the truck. Okay, okay. I said okay. Well, what do you see? There's something moving in the grass. Some small animal. Hold your fire, Louie. Something moving. An animal. You hear me? Don't shoot. <laughs> I hit it. Hey, 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 look, a lion. <laughs> How about that steel? One lousy shot and I killed a lion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you certainly did. A cub, a baby lion. That's what you killed, Louie. A baby lion. Okay, okay, so it's still a lion. A baby lion? And he killed it? You killed it, Louie. You killed it. Ah, buona simba. Oh, oh, oh. Buona, buona simba. Buona simba. What's that mean? I said, what's it mean? He thinks you're a great lion killer, Louie. He thinks you're a very brave man for shooting a lion cub. Look, look, Steele. Let's not get wise about this. I'm a big man, see? I wouldn't want to get rough. Why not, Louis? Look, pal, I'll shoot what I like. I don't ask, see? I don't ask no punk like you. Uh, all right, Steele. You want to play rough, eh? I'll teach you, pal. I'll teach you. Now, hey, what's that? Steele, what's that? A lion. Maybe a lioness. Maybe the cub's mother. This is a very unhealthy place to be in, or it will be when she finds a dead cub. It's the mother lion, Louie. I know it is. Okay, okay. Well, let's get out of here, Steele. I said let's get out of here. The beginning of danger and the peace of the unknown. There's much of these when in a moment we hear more in the story of John Steele, adventurer. Africa is a funny place. Sportsmanship means a lot in a good many places around the world. But in Africa, it's the law. And the law is very simple. You break it, and you go to jail or you're heavily fined. And you don't get your hunting permit renewed. We pushed on. The lioness would find her dead cub, that was sure. If we were around, she'd attack, and someone, me, would have to shoot her in self-defense, and I didn't want to. So we pushed on all that afternoon. Louie was in a cold sweat. Somehow, the mental picture he had of the lion of finding the cub he'd killed scared him. It was close to sundown when we made camp. I chose a spot out in the open, some 15 miles of rough country between us and where the cub had been killed. Buona Simba! Oh, ho, ho! Buona Simba! Buona Simba! Shut up! I said shut up! Take it easy, Louie. Well, let's try to make a monkey out of me. Oh, cut it out, will you, Louie? So I kill the lion cub. So what? That boy will have to report it when we get back. Report, report. Who cares? Well, it won't make you popular. Hey, Steele. Yeah? I haven't forgotten. Excuse me now. I'll take a look around. 
Yeah, settle with that punk. Oh, relax. Don't tell me what to do, baby. It just makes me sick, Louie. What does? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but I keep thinking of that lion and finding a dead baby. What about it? Animals have got feelings, Louie. Yeah? Sure they have. Forget it. I wish I could. I'm scared, Louie. Yeah, you're always scared, baby. It's so lonely out here. It's just like the end of nowhere. It's a lousy place. And you wanted to come up here. Yeah, the boys in New York. So... Me in Africa, going home without shooting a lion. You could have bought a lion skin in the town. Yeah, yeah, I should have done that. Oh, bugs crawling over everything. Yeah, I got a mind to go back. Suit me fine. Yeah, maybe we'll go back, baby, huh? <laughs> What's so funny? You... Look. You talk so big, but when the chips are down... Look, baby, don't get me riled up, huh? I don't know. I was just thinking, that's all. Thinking what? About you and me. <laughs> it's so funny. You did okay, baby. Sure. Three mink coats, flashy apartment on Fifth Avenue, and a limousine to take you shopping. Me, who never had anything. Yeah, remember that. That's what I mean. It's funny. You know something, Louie? What? You know what I see when I look at you? Yeah, what? All I see is three mink coats. What's so bad about that? It's funny, that's all. I ought to see something else when I look at the guy I marry. Louie. Well? I don't love you. Sure, I married you, but I don't love you. Yeah, this stinking heat and you want to start an argument. Me? Out here in Africa yet with big Louie Condon. That's a laugh, you know? Listen, you dumb... Lo you hear that? Lousy line, huh? That was a line, wasn't it? I don't know. How should I know? It sounded like one. <laughs> Maybe it's the mama lion. You know, the cub you killed? What are you trying to do, baby? What are you trying to do? You're trying to scare me, huh? Look, Louie, don't scare. Why wouldn't you be scared? I'd be scared if I thought that lioness had followed us up here. Followed us? You're crazy. I didn't say it had followed us, did I? I just said I'd be scared if I thought so. She, you certainly like to twist words around, Louis. Still? Yeah? What do you think? About what? That lion just now. Well, this is lion country. You, you don't think it could have been that, uh, that one we heard this morning? You mean the cub's mother? Be crazy, huh? We're 15 miles from where that happened. Yeah, she couldn't have followed us, could she? Could have, I suppose. <laughs> Steel, this isn't funny. Listen. There may be 20, 30, even 50 lions in this neighborhood. Why should the one we just heard be the same one of this morning? Yeah. They all sound alike, huh? One of the people! One of the people! you! Let them alone. George, put some more wood on the fire and cut out the nonsense, you hear me? Oh, yes, one of Yeah, she seemed close at that time. Don't worry, you're going to hear that all night in words. You'll hear screaming. A leopard killing a monkey. All sorts of sounds. Just don't take any notice. It happens every night. Get some sleep. We ought to make an early start in the morning if we're going to overtake that safari. I'll have George put up the tent for you. Where are you asleep? All oh, right, here on the ground sheet by the fire. I'm used to the earth. We should have brought along another tent. Steve? Yeah? What about somebody keeping watch? I'll take turns with George. Ah, uh, okay. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about that either. <laughs> When? Gee, can't you go to sleep? Oh, I'm in line here listening. So let me sleep. It's a lousy tent. I can't breathe. Oh, Louie, please. How can you sleep? I would if you just let me. Let's go back, baby. Let's go back to town, huh? Yeah, tomorrow morning. No, tonight. Are you crazy or something? Oh, quit waking me up, will you? I'll blow my top if I stay here. <laughs> what was that? Oh, how should I know? I'll show you. I'll show all of you. I'm going back. Tonight. Understand? Tonight. What's the matter, Louie? Can't sleep? No. Nah. I'll walk too far out of camp. I want to smoke. I have cigarettes here. Nah. I got my own on the truck. I'll get him. What the... Hey, Louie! What are you doing? 
Hurry, come back here. I'll try in these steel I'll blast you. One hand, see? I can drive with one hand. Go on, get back or I'll blast you with the rod. Lloyd, come back here. He go crazy and hit Warner? Something pretty close to it. No oh, use trying to catch him. Where he go? Back to town. That's my guess. He gonna get lost, Warner. He not gonna find his way back. He go run and run and suffer. Oh, the trail's pretty clear. He crazy fella, all right. His wife must be asleep. Oh, he go tell her? No point in telling her until morning, anyway. We go back in morning, Warner? Yeah. We go back. And it's going to be a long trek, George. Come on, George. The lioness was backing away from the tent, probably startled by the girl's screams. The animal was a beauty. In the moonlight, she seemed the color of pale gold. The moment she spotted George and me, she sprang towards the bush. I did take aim, but I didn't fire. Why? Maybe because she'd done no harm. Maybe because she was a female. Maybe because she was so beautiful. There could have been another reason. <laughs> Here, it's all right now. She's gone. I, I woke up and I could hear something sniffing about just outside the tent. And then all of a sudden it poked its head under the tent and looked right in. George, there's a bottle of brandy in my duffel bag. Get it, will you? Your bottle, I got... It, it poked its head right in the tent and I looked around... It was looking for Louie. It was looking for Louie. I know it was. I felt it. It didn't even take any notice there, there, of me. Now, listen, come on. Take it easy. Take it easy. You don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. Look. Look. Now, listen, will you? I know what I'm talking about, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Steele. I, I could feel it. That animal was looking for Louie. Not me. Not anybody else. Just Louie. <laughs> Suspense and action. One leads to the other. And the result we'll hear in a moment with the climax of another adventure with John Steele. I don't know. I've lain awake nights trying to figure it out. Maybe the lion is sniffing around Gwen's tent that night was the mama of the cub Louie had killed. I don't know. Anyway, it took George, the native boy Gwen, and me two days to get back to town. It was night when we reached the hotel. Louie was there. I didn't want to see him. Gwen had to. She was his wife. Okay, okay, okay. I killed a cop. So what? Do I get indicted by a grand jury for it? What is this, anyway? Now, look. It's crazy. It's crazy. You hear it? I heard something. Like a lion. You get lions on the brain. Yeah, yeah. It'd be crazy. Sounded like it was outside in the garden. Nothing out there. Where are you going? Down to the bar. I need a pick-me-up. That guy Steele, he's down there waiting for you. And why should you care? You left me with him up there in the jungle, didn't you? joking, Mr. Steele. I tell you, it was a lion we heard just then. Could have been. Wouldn't be the first time one came in as close to town as this. We had one come right into the hotel gardens last year. Well, there's no reason why not, Johnny. This hotel is on the edge of town. Just step outside the grounds and you're practically in the bush country. You see out that window, Mr. Steele? Lots of men oh, looking yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. We've got a lion here, all right. It'd be fantastic if... Uh... Oh, uh, hello, Gwen. How are you, Mr. Steele? Hi, John. Evening, Mrs. Conlon. What'll it be? My regular, I guess. Pink chin, huh? All right. <sighs> it is one. Well, so what? They sometimes wander this way. It's nothing to be alarmed about. Somebody sees the lion on one of the lower roofs. It's her. No, 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 Gwen. And Louie's upstairs alone. The windows are open. Well, if it'll make you feel better, let's go up to him. It's her, I know. She followed us back. She knew we'd take her to where Louie was. I just know it. Mrs. Conlon, you'd better drink this. You need it. No, no. Mr. Steele, shall we go? Sure. We'll go, Gwen. The shooting at her. Outside in the grounds. Let's go upstairs. I got an awful feeling, Mr. Steele. Gwen, you're just building something up in your mind. No, 
It's a feeling. You know what I mean? I, I get awfully strong feelings. Somebody once told me I was psychic. Do you think I could be? Yeah, yeah, you could be. It's in the room. It's in the room. All right, all right. The door's closed. It's her, Steele. It's her. You see, Mr. Steele, she's found where Louis is. Go on back. I'll see if anything's in the room. Don't you open that door. Okay, okay. But let me listen a while outside of it. Do you hear anything inside? No, not a thing. For me? I'll open the door a couple of inches. Be careful, huh? Yeah, yeah, very. There's nothing here. The chair under the window's been knocked over. Well, I guess Louie did see the light. She's gone, huh? Well, she's not in this room. The bedroom door's closed. So she's not in there. It's crazy, isn't it? By this time, several search parties were forming. The rest of the hotel guests jammed the cocktail lounge for safety. A few of the old hands, myself included, spread out through the ground, singly, armed with high-powered rifles. Singly, did I say? I was wrong. I had Gwen with me. I couldn't get rid of her. The whole thing seemed to fascinate her. Not a sign, huh? I should go inside. I, I couldn't. Oh, no, I guess not. I'm not really scared for myself or anybody else except Louie. You're quite convinced, huh? I know what I'm talking about. That animal could be five miles away from here by now. He just wandered into the hotel grounds, got confused, she scared, and ran off. Mr. Steele, I don't believe it. One of the men saw her, a lioness, a young one, light-colored. It must be the same one. You still? You see something? I'm not sure. Where? Whereabouts? Across there. This side of the hotel garage. An animal? Could have been a big dog. Could have been, maybe. Don't move. I'll make a sound. <gasps> On the road. You stay here. It's her. And she's got somebody. A man. She's dragging him along the road. Right where you are. It's Louie. She's got Louie. I know she has. I can't shoot from this distance. The light's too uncertain. I might hit Louie. She's seen us. She's looking back at us. I'm going to try and get closer to her. She found Louie. I know she would. It's crazy. It was a clean shot. Just one. The animal sank to the ground, dead. I had to do it. She'd have been hunted anyway until she was killed. Louie was in bad shape. She'd mauled him, but she hadn't killed him yet. My shot brought everybody to the scene, and Louie was rushed to the hospital. Gwen and I went there, and we waited. He's awful sick, huh? Yeah, and he's had a bad scare, too. Poor guy. Mm-hmm. But, but now you know, don't you, Mr. Steele? Know what? It was the same lion. We saw her. It was the same one. She followed us 50 miles to find Louie. No, Gwen, I I don't really think she was the same one. Just a queer coincidence, that's all. Oh, Mr. Steele, you know different. You just don't want to admit it. We'll never know, Gwen. We'll never know. Taking a standby for adventure with John Steele. And in a moment, John Steele returns with more of his story. This is John Steele. Be around next week, huh? And remember, adventure is where you find it. But don't look for it. It may find you. Mm -hmm.